notion of survivorship and treating the post-cancer experience as a chronic disease is something we weren't talking about. And it's certainly something at the beginning of my cancer process that I wondered if, if that was possible. I'm Scott Wilson, I'm 52 years of age and I'm a survivor of stage four colorectal cancer. But in fact, it was my mother who first sort of found the cancer hurdle, if you like, and at 56, she was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer back in Scotland. My mother endured a tough chemotherapy battle uh, and at the age of 59 she passed away um, uh, from colon cancer. The fact that we can actually contemplate a full energetic life after cancer and that's exactly how I'm living my life. I'm out there, I'm active, I'm still doing photography, I'm still being a full-time dad and, and that's wonderful to me and it's certainly something at the beginning of my cancer process that I wondered if, if that was possible. Dear scientist, I was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer at 48 with liver metastasis. After surgery to my colon, 40 weeks of chemo, immunotherapy and a liver resection, I was declared NED or no evidence disease in August 2017 and I have undergone maintenance treatments every two weeks in the two years since. The truth is though, life after cancer has no normal. The near daily fear of recurrence is real, albeit less debilitating with time. I'm trying to do my bit now by raising awareness and pushing for policy change, but these efforts pale into insignificance compared to the possibilities of science to understand why our young people are suffering a preventable disease more frequently than previous generations. My now, hope now is that, is the, that same the same level, level of progress can be seen over the next two decades as were achieved in the 20 years of life-saving invention that have already benefited me and so many like me following my mother's untimely death. Thank you, Scott Wilson. Scott, I wanted to welcome you to Pfizer and uh, I read your letter and I, I was really moved by your entire experience. Thank you very much. It's, it's a hard experience to capture on paper and sort of really bring to life the whole kind of emotional journeys. I'd like to think that part of the reason I'm here is because of, of people like my mother working with people like you to actually make those breakthroughs. As scientists, we we're, we're fascinated by the problem, but what motivates us is, is the solution. Other types of cancers have very specific mutations that we can link directly to growth pathways. And then we, you know, we start with that. We say, hey, we have a hypothesis that this mutant protein is making the tumor grow. And with colorectal, we spend a lot of time looking at the genetic background of those so that we can try and find those proteins. But it's only been, you know, very recently that we've been able to link the genetic testing and the genetic sequencing and all of that information that's in those tumors to the biological processes that are causing the tumors to grow. That's been like probably one of the biggest changes in cancer therapy recently is trying to figure out how to get the immune system to see that tumor and attack it and there's been some amazing progress there. The speed of the changes and the speed of the breakthroughs has definitely increased. We have a long way to go. Yeah. The advocacy and the getting the message out there to not ignore symptoms that you have is so important, so, so important. Cancer is scary to me too. You know, my father died of cancer maybe a year prior to a therapy that I know he would have benefited from. It's real, it's, and we feel it. We walk around these halls, we all know people. The passion and emotion around this world is, is absolutely electric. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but I couldn't hope to meet a lovelier bunch of people mm -hmm. out of the most horrible experience ever. But the community is just stunning and, and what we can do together is just unbelievable.